You're listening to Pelly Rocco Platters on RadioReverb.com 97.2 FM. And our guest is here, Justin Welsh, the Peter Pan of Britpop. <laughs> <laughs> nice Ex- to be here, nice to be here. <laughs> Thanks for coming on. Um, drummer in Elastica. For That's right. Several, yeah. One of the founder members as well. That's so right, yeah, 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 right from the start. So um, it started with, uh, well, there's a bit of a mad idea at Glastonbury one year with... Um, Damon, Justin, Justine, and myself, and we sort of they just said, Do You want to do some bit of recording? And um, just what in the studio, and I was like, Yeah, all right, give it a go. And before we knew it, we had a, a band together, you know. So, um, the rest is history, if you like, if you, like you know. And the 90s was your so the 90s was a big, yeah, suppose, but yeah, like it was, a, yeah, it was a kind of crazy sort of time you know the 90s um was it one of them if, if you can remember it you obviously weren't there <laughs> yeah it's, it's, yeah that's the one isn't it uh, I, i'm bits of it it's, it's a bit cloudy in places but uh um it's become the mist is mist has uh sort of disappeared slightly over the years and it started the, the, the oh yeah i was there i did do that yeah that did happen you know so it's yeah so it's time to write the book isn't it you know yeah, what i mean yeah are you gonna no <laughs> <laughs> um so I mean, yeah, I mean, they're, the band's career was you did all sorts. Really, you did most things that bands, you know. Yeah, done. well, it, top, top of pops for starters. <laughs> we did top, top of pops. I think it was about five times actually. Yeah. But um, we we were looking off to first of all the the album. The first album it went straight in at number one. It was the really? fastest right. selling cool. UK album of all time when it went in. Right. And we were um, flying back from one of the tours in America, and uh, it was when before you know. You, well, before you could not go into the cockpit, you know what I mean. So we'd get in contact with the with the uh, with the flight staff, and they'd call down and say, "Oh yeah, you've you know find out what the position was." And it didn't go; it's dived, and the plane started it's, it's going got, downwards. Yeah, tried, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it's gone. Yeah, it's gone straight in number one and gone gold as well. So oh, that nice was, uh, I think, take that might have kind of picked us to the post since then. But uh, mm. you know, mm. it was good times. It was very good. Yeah, yeah. you know, we did, did a lot of touring. We were looking off to um, see the world a few times. Um, yeah, you know, played all the big festivals. Yeah. You know, we had a good oh. run, really. You know, and and I suppose no regrets at all. You know, it was a, it was it was a long party. Yeah, <laughs> and a good one. A good one, yeah. Definitely. So, how long have you how long have you been drumming? And since well, you a kid, uh, the drumming started. It was first of all uh, when I was about uh, I was probably about ten, really. My I think my dad bought a kit um, for the house. He used to play a bit in sort of sixties mod bands and. Um, he got it from a neighbour, so it was an excuse really to just start, you know. I think for himself really, but you know, I, I ended. I, t- I talked to it and because uh, normally and you it. get presents like that. Oh look, here's a drum kit, and then you're like, oh it, god, the racket. Yeah, yeah, it. yeah. But yeah. for you, it paid off. So well, I kind of it was the racket. I think I my mean, mates used to come around and bash away for a bit, and they mm-hmm. kind of got rid of it, and they sort of encouraged me to sort of play music again you know get involved in in, in, in and you know the, the the incentive was if you if you learn then we can you know we'll get a kit in the house again and there's always music in our house always you know there's uh my parents are real kind of 60s sort of modern motowny sort of people and yeah they just always loads of music in the house you know as far as i can remember well that's possibly a link to what you're going to play it now. is a link yeah 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 well this this track reflections by Dino ross and the supremes this is one of the first tracks that i always remember and think of when it was my sort of childhood the parents dancing in the kitchen to this tune so um this is why i've chose this as the first track of the night really well when we were queuing it as well the uh the psychedelic sort of intro it sounds really contem- it's, contemporary it's, it's still, quite apt it? for the evening isn't it yeah, we're going yeah. all psychedelic shall i put it on yeah, yeah here we go so, Justin, that was your first song, The Supremes, and you were saying you found you came from a bit of a mod upbringing, the family there, still buying scooters and things oh, to this my, day. Uh, oh, my parents are just still living the dream, if you like. You know, they have, well, two, well, ju- like two, two, two jukeboxes in the house, one one's full of 60s stuff and all the rest of it, and, and, you know, it's a regular occurrence, still on a Saturday night for them to be dancing around the house. Oh, my dad's really? got a couple of scooters, yeah, a couple of Lambrettas. In fact, he's got my old one, which... Um, I still got my eye on, but uh, he's uh, he's it's in the in the restoration part of the garage, you know. So yeah, they they're still into that. They still love all that sort of side of it. Um, so what, I mean, one of the other major youth cults of the f- last few decades, punk rock. And yeah. Like the band you chosen next. I, I mean, I was saying that I was one of the first. They're not really a punk band, are they? But they're kind of like a nice, safe punk band when you're young. 
and you don't really know what punk rock is. Well, I think, rats. I think yeah. I, well, I think it was. It was. It was I, I didn't really. Need, I didn't. It know didn't matter. Well, I didn't know what no. punk was. I mean, my my story is it was. It was. It was, <laughs> it was the first record I actually bought out of my own kind of pocket money from W. H. Smiths. You know, mm. so it's kind of got that sort of history of just thinking it was. I think I remember the sax. So I probably haven't oh. played it since then. You know. But um, the, actual, the original seven inches in I, is in an ex-girlfriend's loft somewhere. I would have thought so. Yeah, uh, yeah. Right. should we put Let's it on? have a listen. Yeah. yeah, you're listening to Pelly Rocco Platters on Radio Reverb dot com ninety seven point two FM, and Justin is here, the Peter Pan of Britpop, <laughs> uh, ex drummer in Elastico, and we were talking about your drumming roots. As yeah, it yeah, 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 yeah. Um, so you've been playing drums at home did you, did, did you have any big plans on forming a band or joining a band or were you just playing it as fun and I was what I was always straight away you know I was always kind of playing music was something I knew I wanted to do from early on in school you know I mean the first band I suppose following on from the from the rat trap thing I know it's a bit pantomime punk and all that but uh, the first band was just full full on punk you know no one could really play we had two songs uh, and we just played the Classic two songs punk, over yeah. and over and over again, <laughs> yeah. which was great, you know. Yeah. And um, but once it started, to, the band soon split up, and um, and then I just started answering adverts for for in the local music shop for drummer wanted. So I ended up, and there was no drummers where I was from, you know. Mm. So so where was that? In Sorry. in the Midlands, Nuneaton in the Midlands. Okay. And um, as there was no drummers, I ended up getting all the jobs. So <laughs> it was kind of even though I was at the schoolboy. It, as it was, there was all these bands that were older than me, but they needed drummers. So I quickly learned my trade, if you like, you know. Um, and then it, it, that's it's just I ended up playing in loads of like kind of kind of uh, club bands and just doing covers. And I was earning good money at school, really, just mm. you know, just playing cover versions and stuff. Um, but uh, but the, you know, moving on to. This, <laughs> <laughs> <Hey>. <laughs> <laughs> it is a live show this hey. evening. <laughs> um, so yeah, just you know, perfecting my art really. And there was, there was a big kind of Midlands sort of ska movement going on, you know. And 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 the the, the specials for me really were were the sort of a, I suppose the first band that I could call my own, if you know what I mean. Because mm. it's not a bad one to start with. Wow, well, <laughs> they, they you know the specials were from Coventry yeah. or something neat, and it's eight miles up the road. Mm. Kind of supported Coventry City Football Club, it was so therefore I made it my own, you know. So that's that's how I ended up getting into, yeah, into in, into that sort of two tone stuff. And as a drummer, I mean, is it a Keith Moon? Is he always every drummer's hero? Yeah, I think so. I think that's yeah. where it starts. He was pretty special, wasn't he? I think that's where it starts. I think I've mellowed a little bit in my old age these days and I tend to just listen to the kind of grooves, but initially it was all you about the, 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 the toms, yeah, loads yeah. of flashy stuff, yeah, yeah loads of rolls. Yeah. doing all that and I don't think anyone was really kind of that I knew was heading in that direction you know they were kind of it was more straight four 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 sort of punk stuff and I was into just doing all the kind of the mad look at me at the back the Muppets the animal thing you yeah. know and I think it's well it still goes to inspire hundreds thousands yeah. you know so we're going to listen to specials is that right yeah that's I mean we had a little snippet uh, this, I mean it, oh we're going to play vinyl aren't we we're going to play some vinyl, yeah. So Justin Welsh is here, choosing some music and uh, the specials. Um, just so you moved to London. Moved to London. Um, streets paved with gold and all that sort yeah. of stuff. Yeah, <laughs> well, I kind of... Well, it was a bit like that, really. It was a, a move with a bunch of mates who were in a band and they were all old, older than me. And um, that was their plan. That was their dream as well, if you know what I mean. So they, they kind of... They'd made the decision to go. I was still 16, so it was a pretty big, big step for my part, yeah. which meant I had to find work. So I worked in a bakery, and then um, making cakes for selfridges. <laughs> you know, still yeah. can't. I'm not a baker. You know what I mean? But uh, we started. Um, you just got kids. Yeah, made some money to survive. And I, and then it's kind of again, it was the same thing. The only way I knew how to do things was was answer ad, answer adverts. You know, so I'd get a melody maker. As, as it was then and so and at the back you'd have all those kind of you know drummer one eight guitarists just dance through all the adverts I think that was the way to get in a band it then wasn't it yeah <laughs> you wouldn't think of it now <laughs> yeah you would just look online drummer wanted or whatever but yeah. just the, the old kind of the analogue version of, of finding yourself in a band I suppose 
So I just answer all the adverts and audition, and then yeah. one of them was was um, was uh, it's quite a, quite a grind, isn't it? Going to lots yeah. of different auditions. Yeah. Well, some of the also the, some of the bands were just like you know just completely different league that I was into, and you know it was all kind of some metal stuff and. That's not it wasn't really my yeah, thing, you know. But but I think it also kind of it was an audition in itself, how to audition. Yeah. You know. Right. So I ended up just getting quite good at doing auditions, like you know, on the spur of the moment, learning a song, fitting in and sort of adapting. I think that's and probably trying to suss people out quite quickly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which I think I think you just do in life, don't you know, how to get on with people, you sort yeah. of But I think that was one of the sort of uh, techniques that I picked up and, and I seem to be getting the the auditions you know phoning me back again you say, can you come next week I'm like oh I'm kind of in three bands you know what I mean <laughs> so um, uh, but one of them was Justine you know meeting the suede lot so I ended up being their drummer for a bit a similar thing <coughs> at, at the premises uh, going down there and they had a little drum machine I had a little drum machine which I um, which uh, I just um, just just learnt the tracks again Seem to have got in the band, and they said, "Do you want to be? Uh, we're in the studio the following week." 